I am often asked at my many performances around the world by lay people and musicians alike, which always amuses me, but of course the latter should know, but um, bless their hearts, they come up and they say, uh, Carlo, you know, we see this amazing flight deck of this 777 that you're flying here, and we see this gallery full of pipes or speakers or whatever the medium of instruments you're playing. They said, you know, um, wh how do you actually go in and meld and mix and make the pieces work? How do you translate what in truth in its natural state is the most unmusical uh, and mechanical of all the instruments into a musical, living, breathing instrument. Well, there are several ways of doing it, ladies and gentlemen. Manipulating the stops, which you see here. Think of each one of these as a color that a painter has at his or her disposal, which they can go down and mix and meld and put up on the lovely canvas. Each piece of music that I play, for example, would be a canvas with a different tone poem, a different tone painting. The other way you make music on this very uh, sort of mechanical instrument, which is incidentally not touch sensitive, the organ is not blessed with the 88 note discipline of the piano, even though it has keyboards uh, here for the hands and one, of course, for the feet. Uh, the other way I can tell you that you create music on the organ is first you must know that the pipes of the organ, many of them are enclosed in small or large rooms. And these rooms have fronted Venetian blinds made of very heavy wood called swell shutters, which open and close either pneumatically or by some other means. And you should know that organ pipes speak at the same volume all the time. So the only way you make a pianissimo or graduate forward to a fortissimo at whatever level is by operating the swell pedals, which you see here. And I just give you an example. If I engage some stops and I play a chord, that's with the shutters open. If I shut them, the effect is quite different. Yeah, especially in playing melodic line with imitative orchestral voices with a light tremulant, you can make very, very effective use of the swell pedals and the swell expression possibilities with which this organ and many, of course, and most are afforded. The other way you make music on the organ is by voice leading, the connecting of one note to the other, yes? So it's very possible to sit here and play the organ all detached, which I think would be a great mistake if you went. Right? Or you use voice leading. Hopefully, a part of that is something that we know is called tensionless key legato, which is playing from here as an organist and not like a pianist who uses the whole arm to develop the big technique and the big sound. So we'll, just by voice leading, the difference is something else, by connecting of one note to the other. Voice leading. Suddenly it makes it completely different, not just a grouping of notes, but thematic musical material. This organ, as with all organs, generally has uh, four or five several uh, families of tone with which I have to work. Uh, the first one is known as the principal or the diapason family. These are the sounds of the king of instruments that imitate absolutely nothing whatsoever in the symphony orchestra. Let me just play a very short example. Uh, the chorales of Cesar Franck are uh, some of my favorite pieces to play. This is from the first chorale of Franck, which is very much, uh, very widely known by all organists and many musicians. This is the sound, the ground swell sound of the organ, the diapasons or the principles.
I think that's a very lovely sound. It's, you're just washed in these tonalities, in this lovely acoustic. The great Trelleborg organ, of course, relies on the space in which it is placed to sing for you. But it continues to sing with tonal families, with the second uh, tonality family, which is the little flute family. The flutes particularly are marvelous here. Uh, all the unison flutes together make this sort of sound. There's one particularly beautiful stop here, which is called a flauto mirabilis, which is in its other uh, name here on the console, a flute harmonique, a harmonic flute. And the sound of this register is particularly uh, fine. If I use it here against a soft backdrop of strings for the little Claire de Lune by Louis Vierne, which sounds like so. You can hear the pipe overblowing slightly. Ah, oh, so pretty, so sweet. <laughs> 